Hey so guys, my name is Ellen Fox, welcome to my channel and today we have a very special trailer. I don't think I've done any PG-13 animated movie trailer reaction on here before, so this is an occasion and let's begin. Many years ago, this candle blessed our family with a miracle. Our house, our casita came to life with magic. Hola, casita. Floors! Floors! Let's go! In time, every member of our family... Cecilia, up top! ...was given their own magical gift. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I understand you. I'm not super strong like Luisa. The donkey's got out again. On it! Uh, or effortlessly perfect like Senorita Perfecta Isabella. But, Mama, why am I the only one that didn't get a gift? You're just as special as anyone else in this family. You just healed my hand with an arepa con queso. Casita? What's going on? The magic is in danger. We gotta get out of here! We must protect our home. We must protect our family. Is my chance. I will save the magic. Wait, how do I save the magic? I'm losing my gift! <laughs> Mirabel, the fate of the family is gonna come down to you. I can't do this. Let me help you. The rats told me everything. Don't eat those. Even in our darkest moments, Stairs. Ah! But at least I'll have a friend. Nope, you flew away immediately. Quitter! <sighs> we have a very lazy parrot. He would have never flown away. He hates flying. He never flies. I think he would have pref he would have like sat on her arm or shoulder or something like just accompanied her. He's he's too lazy. I'm just gonna start by saying this is the most adorable trailer I've watched in a while. I don't think Disney has ever given us a trailer this full of happiness. Even when they were talking about the casita falling apart, it just seemed so joyous. And the music, my god, the background song was just amazing. I need, I need this playlist right now. It's so good. It's so good to dance to and do so many other things and just... This is amazing and so colorful and so heartwarming. And for once, it's about family. There's no boy, girl, nothing like that. And it's the first movie where it's not the lead who's the special one. Well, she is the special one because she doesn't have powers. Many years ago, this candle blessed our family with a miracle. Can we talk about the amount of people around here? Are they all living in this one casita? That's a lot of people. I don't think I've ever seen that many people even in a hotel. That's a lot of people. Floors! Floors! Let's go! Our housekeeper would have absolutely adored this house. She's often, you know, sitting around chatting with me and she's like, oh, well, and if I could just say, switch on and the bulbs switch on. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, if it comes down to the point where just like we have to motion and things happen, would get too lazy and say, why do I even have to move a hand? Let me think and it shall happen. Why am I the only one that didn't get a gift? This kind of reminded me of Barbie Fairytopia, where Barbie was the only one who did not have wings and everyone else had wings. So it's like good to see for once in a Disney movie where the lead is not able to talk to animals or has magic and... At the end of the day, this has been done before. Obviously, it has been done before. And, you know, her being all magicless and stuff and yet saying that I'm going to save the world, the casita. It's, it's been done before, but it's a, it's a kid's movie. We know it's going to end happily. It's just it's going to be a very relaxed watch and with the most amazing music. I'm ready for this. I'm losing my gift! <laughs> I was okay as long as it was just the casita falling apart. I was like, you know, it's 
we'll we'll fix it it'll be okay but then they're losing their powers now that is something that's gonna be hard to live with i like sometimes think about people you know living without your powers it's like you know disability you're not able to like imagine you can't move your your limbs or it's hard to breathe you know people have people live through this people live through it and it's just we're never thankful enough for the things we can do it's it is magical you know if you sometimes think about it it's so magical how you like just you don't even think about it and you just like you're able to do things like switch on and it's just like switch on like snap and it snaps it's awesome what kind of magical let me help you the rats told me everything don't eat those Oh god, it's like watching Nat Geo. You're seeing this deer being chased by a cheetah and you're like, if I wish for the deer to live, it's like unjust towards the cheetah because he deserves to eat. But if I want the cheetah, like if I'm rooting for the cheetah, then it's the deer that has to leave. It's just it's a you can't choose and then there are vegans who are like, "We're protecting the earth." I mean, you do realize that Carnivores don't have another option. Mr. Rooster has another option, and that's why he's screaming and telling me, we know you have other options, and we know you don't eat meat. You are meat. <laughs> um, but I personally believe that plants and animals both have an equal right at living, and if you're like chopping trees after trees to consume, because I have came across so many vegetarians and vegans, they, are, they consume large amounts of foods in order to get the amount of nutrients and proteins they need and I'm like you do realize that these trees take ages to grow just like animals and they feel pain what business do you have eating 12 bananas a day Even in our that is just house hounds what are they doing in a Disney movie but then again, we had a cat named Lucifer. I never focused on that. Growing up, I never focused on that until I watched Lucifer and then I watched Cinderella again. And I was like, wait a damn second. That cat's name has always been Lucifer. Even in our darkest moments, there's light where you least expect it. This motivational line has got me thinking of one thing and if I say it, you guys are going to hate me, but I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> so about a week ago, I was writing my book and I was completely out of inspiration. I was stuck. I did not know what to write next. Like, you know, you when you come up with the idea of a book, you have the middle, you have the end, the beginning. But there are these gaps that you have to fill in. So there was this gap that I had to fill in. And I was thinking and thinking and thinking, like, what do I write? What do I write? What do I write? And like four days passed without me getting a single idea. I tried everything. I even watched movies and TV shows, like just anything. I'll take anything. And nothing was working. And about four or five days later, we received this call. And it's like, this guy has had a near heart attack. And like, we have to go and like visit him at the hospital or whatever. And like, as soon as I got the news, I was like, yes, a lordy will have a heart attack. Elodie is a character in the book. I was like, he'll have a heart attack and this will happen and that will happen and da 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 da. And I had like all these ideas for like the next five chapters. And in all that darkness, I found that light and I felt pretty bad because, you know, this guy is hospitalized right now and all you can think about is your book. But, you know, in that darkness, I found some light. And he's okay. Um, and he, um, before you guys attacked me, he brought that upon himself for the past five years. Every doctor had been telling him to change his eating habits and every other habits, and he was not changing them. And now he has had a near heart attack. So it's it's on him, not us. A lot of stairs, but at least I'll have a friend. Nope, you flew away immediately. I'll be honest, this parrot, nor any other parrot, with the exception of mine, could be Diago. My God, is he the best parrot I've ever came across, especially in the animated Aladdin. My God, he is so savage. <laughs> and in the um, live action one as well, my God, when he grew into this like ginormous, like dragon sized parrot, that was also pretty cool. Disney is so creative with most of its movies. So, and while we're on that topic, I'm not going to go ahead and say that, you know, the decision of taking a black girl to play the Little Mermaid is a wrong decision because I want to watch the movie and then judge. Um, we haven't even received the trailer yet, so 
let's just, you know, not judge a book by its cover. So quite truthfully speaking, the problem isn't with, you know, casting a person from a different race. The problem is when you grow up with something like Cinderella and The Lion King, we grew up with these movies and we have like this, they have this special place in our hearts. Like, for example, if you talk of anything, if you say anything against Cinderella, I will literally not stand it. That's how much I love her. So imagine they take that story and turn Cinderella into this warrior princess. It's not right. She's not that person. Like in Maleficent, Mr. Sophie World, they decided that Aurora will like show up in an armor and she'll fight and stuff. And ultimately they decided that Aurora is not that person. Her beauty, her power is in like talking to animals and her kindness and her, you know, she is powerful in those aspects. And a person is not just powerful when he's holding a sword. Being courageous and being kind and being patient, all that also takes power. So, you know, staying original to something is what makes us like something. Like the ending of Mulan. I was so excited for Mulan, but that ending kind of like threw me off. I was like, it makes you feel like something you've known for so long has turned out to be a lie to an extent like that. So, you know, in 10 years or 20 years, when we get a live action of probably this movie, let it be true to this. That's all I'm asking for. But then again, I will, you know, watch the movie, every single movie, watch it and watch it from a neutral perspective. Watch it from, you know, probably even like put the original aside, look at it from a clear eye and then judge it. Because there are people who made that movie, there are people who worked, they, they poured their blood and sweat into that movie. Don't just judge it. Really look at it and then talk. So that was it for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a like. Also comment below and let me know your favorite Disney movie ever. Also subscribe, click the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload. And also check out my edits channel and my comedy channel and my Instagram. It's at LNF when it's called Fox. I'll leave the link to them in the description box. That's it. I'm the only other Fox in this world. And I think my most favorite Disney movie um, it's a close tie between the live action Aladdin and Cinderella. They're both really beautiful. Disney just makes really amazing movies. The animated one, all of them are really good. You know, The Little Mermaid is amazing. Frozen is good. Tangle is good. But if I had to choose, <laughs> no, I can't choose. I really can't choose. So if you can choose, let me know your favorite and bye.